Hi, my name is Vincent and today I want to take a look at applications of differentiation. So we have find the dimensions of the rectangle with the maximum area that can be inscribed in a circle of radius 13. So for this problem we want to get a strong visual of what the problem is asking. So we're trying to maximize the area of a rectangle inscribed in a circle of radius 13. So what we want to do is we have some arbitrary rectangle and we could label the length of this rectangle x and we can label the width of this rectangle y. And now we'll just fill in all the other appropriate sides. So we have a length of x and a width of y. So now we were also given that the radius of this circle is equal to 13. So we could draw in this diagonal and note that this diagonal is made up of two radii, which in some sense we're building a diameter for this circle. So the length of this diameter is equal to 13 plus 13 because the length of the radius is 13. So we have a diameter of 26. So now we can label this diameter 26. And now what we're trying to do is maximize the area of this rectangle. So our first step now is to set up two equations and make a substitution. So we know that in general the area of a rectangle is equal to length times width. So the length of our rectangle is x and the width of our rectangle is y. So we have x times y. And now using the Pythagorean theorem we could set up a relationship between notice how we have two right triangles building this rectangle. So now by the Pythagorean theorem we could say that the length of the first leg squared plus the length of the second leg squared is equal to the length of the hypotenuse squared. So this gives us x squared plus y squared is equal to 26 squared. But now when we look at these equations, we can simplify this equation and say x squared plus y squared equals 676. This places limits on x and y. Notice how if the diameter of this circle is 26. That means that x and y can't be any bigger than 26. So we have these restrictions. We have that x is between 0 and 26 and we also have y is between 0 and 26. For this problem it won't make a difference but later on you'll see sometimes we need to have a restriction on x and y in order to pick the right root when we're solving. So now we're going to use these two equations and set up a function of x. So what we want to do for x squared plus y squared equals 676, we want to solve for y. So we want this to say y equals. So what we're going to do is we're going to subtract x squared from both sides and that gives us y squared equals 676 minus x squared. What we're doing is subtracting x squared from both sides. So now we have y equals the square root of 676 minus x squared. So now what we need to do is we're going to substitute for this value of y. y equals the square root of 676 minus x squared. We're going to substitute for this value of y into the equation for area. So now in line 3 we have area equals and now we're going to keep x. We're not going to substitute for x but now we're going to substitute for y so we have x times the square root of 676 minus x squared. So now what this represents is the area of this rectangle in terms of x. So this is a function of x in some sense. So now if we're trying to maximize the area of the rectangle, we're trying to find a maximum value of this function here. So what we need to do is we're going to take the derivative and try to find a critical point and we're going to show that that critical point is a maximum value for this function. So in the next line, we're going to be taking the derivative with respect to x of both sides. So we're going to have dA dx, which in some sense reads d dx of a, equals d dx of x times the square root of 676 minus x squared. So now what we want to do, what I'm going to 
do before we move to the next step. Instead of calling this the square root of 676 minus x squared, let's call it 676 minus x squared to the one half. Because when we take the derivative of this, we want to use the power rule. And it's much easier to work with a rational exponent than it is a square root. So now for line 5, we have dA dx is equal to, and now we're going to use the product rule. We're going to find the derivative of the first term, x, so the derivative of the first term is x, times the second term, which is 676 minus x squared to the one-half power. And now we're adding the first term, x, times the derivative of the second term. So now this is where we're going to use the exponent rule and the chain rule. So we're doing one-half times 676 minus x squared to the one-half minus one, so to the negative one-half, times the derivative of the inside. Now the derivative of negative x squared is negative 2x. So now we want to simplify this so that it looks like something we could work with. And we have dA dx is equal to, and now we're going to put it back in radical form, we have the square root of 676 minus x squared plus, and now 676 minus x squared to the negative one half would be 1 over the square root of 676 minus x squared. This is where understanding rational exponents and negative exponents will come in. So altogether, we have x times negative 2x is negative 2x squared over, and now we have 1 half, so we could put this 2 in the denominator, and now we have the square root of 676 minus x squared. And now notice here at this step, 2 divided by 2 will cancel. So now what we want to do for the next line, we want to set, what we'll call this line 6. For line 7, we want to set the derivative, the function for the derivative, equal to 0. Because those critical values, the zeros of a derivative, in some sense, they represent the, the, the parts of the function where the rate of change is zero. So notice how when we have a zero slope, this would be a maximum value, a minimum value. So this is what we're targeting by setting the derivative equal to zero. So now we have the square root of 676 minus x squared. And now instead of plus a negative x squared, let's just say minus x squared over the square root of 676 minus x squared, we're setting this equal to zero. So now all we need to do is we're going to add x squared over the square root of 676 minus x squared to both sides. And now on the left hand side, these two terms will cancel. So now for line 8, we have the square root of 676 minus x squared equals x squared over 676 minus x squared. The square root of. Here we go. See, all we did were just rewriting what we had from line 7. Once we add x squared over the square root of 676, minus x squared to both sides. So now, I'm going to get rid of this diagram. Now we're very close to solving this. For the next line, for line number 9, what we want to do is cross multiply both sides. We can think of this as the square root of 676 minus x squared over 1. So now we have 1 times x squared is x squared. And now this equals the square root of 676 minus x squared times the square root of 676 minus x squared. 
is equal to 676 minus x squared. And this has a lot to do with us restricting the domain from 0 to 26. Remember the diameter before was 26, twice the radius. So when we're restricting x to that domain, we're able to multiply these two radicals and simplify them like this. So now we're solving for x. We're going to add x squared to both sides. Negative x squared plus x squared will cancel. And now we have 2x squared equals 676. So now we're going to divide by 2. So now for line 11, we have x squared is equal to, and now 676 divided by 2 is 338. So now to solve for x, we're just going to take the square root of both sides. And now we have x equals, and now the square root of 338. Well, notice how we could call this 2 times 169. So we have that x is equal to 13 radical 2, since the square root of 169 is 13. And now the reason why I didn't incorporate plus or minus when I found the square root of x squared, it's not correct to say the square root of x squared equals x. But because we're talking about distance and the length of the side of a rectangle, we're going to reject the negative solution. So we could just go ahead and say that x equals 13 radical 2. So now to find the corresponding y value, we're going to take the x value we just found, 13 radical 2, and we're going to substitute for this value of x into the equation x squared plus y squared equals 676. So now when we substitute, we have x squared, or we're going to substitute 13 radical 2. So we have 13 radical 2 squared plus y squared is equal to 676. So now to simplify 13 radical 2 squared, note that 13 squared is 169. Radical 2 squared is 2, so 169 times 2 is 338. So we have 338 plus y squared equals 676. So now to solve for y, we're going to subtract 338 from both sides. And we have y squared equals 338. But notice how before, when we had x squared equal 338. To solve for x, we took the square root of both sides, and we had x equals 13 radical 2. So that means when we take the square root of both sides in this case, we're going to get y equals 13 radical 2. We could avoid all of that simplification because we already found the square root of 338 to be 13 radical 2. So what this tells us, the dimensions of our rectangle, we have a length of 13 radical 2 and a width of 13 radical 2. So our rectangle is a square. So the answer to this problem, the dimensions of the rectangle with maximum area that could be inscribed in a circle of radius 13, the dimensions, well, the rectangle is a square with side length 13 radical 2. So all the sides of the square are 13 radical 2. That is the rectangle with greatest area that can be inscribed in this circle with radius 13. Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on applications of differentiation. Thank you all for watching, and I hope that this was helpful.